Today I'm going to be talking to you about a poem by Emily Dickinson and I'm just going to tell you about my analysis of it. The poem that I've chosen um, is the one that begins with my life had stood a loaded gun. Emily Dickinson didn't title her poems so in our book this poem is titled 764 and in brackets it's titled 754. I've heard of it referred to both ways, but most people seem to know of it as my life had stood a loaded gun. This is a poem of 24 lines and six stanzas. The poem has two different meanings from what I was able to take from it. I know that uh, I know that her poems can be left completely up to interpretation. But the two meanings that I saw to be the most valid were looking at it as a metaphor for a relationship between a man and a woman, perhaps a lifelong relationship, and I also saw it as a metaphor for power. I was very fortunate that there were two writers in our literary database that, um, that had the same sort of viewpoints as me, and uh, their names are Angela Estes and Gregory Palmerino. Angela is Angela Estes is the one who saw the power metaphor, which is probably the second metaphor that I saw when reading it. And Gregory Palmerino saw it as a metaphor for a relationship. And that was the initial that was the initial idea that I got when I read the poem. So the poem begins by talking about um, Emily saying that her life had stood as a loaded gun. And a loaded gun is pretty much a metaphor for having power that hasn't been tapped into or uh, you know, just this that hasn't been used. It's been built up, but nobody has pulled the trigger yet. So that's what happens when the owner comes and claims the gun. So that can either be looked at as a husband or a, or a man, a lover, who comes into the life of Emily, of Emily Dickinson, and who then gives her power and sort of brings her to life and brings her into her own. Or I could see it being interpreted as as her just finding power in herself, perhaps with her writings and just that whatever prestige. I know that she I know that she was pretty much a reclusive, but still being a female poet, I believe, would have um, would have offered her some sort of power, a little bit of advantage in life, at least some kind of advantage. So I see the metaphor at, just as that, as it being a metaphor for feeling powerless, but feeling like you have the potential, and then finally being able to express that power. And throughout the next couple stanzas, we can see how that power would be very rewarding. Um, she talks about hunting doe in the woods, and doe at the time was pretty much the most the most prestigious animal that you could hunt. It was the animal that royalty hunted. Uh, it could represent newfound freedom that she feels with her lover from the things that they're able to go out and do in the world as a man and a woman, as opposed to just being a female by herself. Um, she talks about how when she speaks for him, the mountains reply. Uh, now that I see is that that could be, as um, as Palmerino says, he says it could be her power in the relationship. So I could I could see it as that that she has a powerful role in the relationship that uh, that that that's just sort of what he's been bringing to to her. Uh, but if we are to look at it on the basis of it being of the poem being just about her own power, it's that she feels that power that literally she could move mountains. And as we move further along in it, she uses a metaphor on top of a metaphor, which I find to be pretty interesting because the metaphor itself is the gun. And now we have this metaphor for, for a Vesuvian power, Vesuvian face, which is literally, like I said, the metaphor on top of the metaphor. The Vesuvian power could represent the burst from a gun, the flash of light that happens when a gun goes off. She refers to herself as a deadly foe. Now we could see that as her being a protector of her husband, as Pomerano says, or a protector of her own power, which is how Estes presented it. And sort of the culmination of the events that, that the poem leads us to um, could could go I could go either way as well. So what Palmerino says um, is that she is a wife that would never be missed because 
her husband or her lover will pass before she does. She talks about how he will die no matter what he has to die before she does. So in that sense, she could be struggling with with wanting to be that person who would be missed because that in its sound that in itself is a sense of power. Um, but how Esther sees it is that she is more so frantically searching to try to retain her power, the power that she has really begun to relish in and just really begin to to adore and to feel on her own. It's just like she's really come into her own shoes that way. So Esther sort of sees it as um, sees. Emily as sort of having a divided self uh, in that and sees this this poem as representing the past, the present, and the future. So the past would represent the gun which is loaded and unused and the present is the gun firing, is really just reveling in that power right at that moment. But then the future looks empty and again we use the metaphor of an empty gun after that's been fired so with no bullets it has no power anymore. And that's if we're looking at the poem as a metaphor specifically for power. Now, as Pomerino says, he says it's a metaphor for relationship. So he sees it as, as also a never-ending cycle because the gun is not doing anything in the beginning although it is loaded, and then it's suddenly on fire, it, you, know, the, you feel the power, you feel the exuberation of being in that relationship and being in love and having your partner with you, but then the partner's gone, so then there's this ending where you're just empty again. So it's not exactly like the beginning, but it's still sort of cyclical in that sense. And he, Paul Marino, also saw this as um, a sort of a struggle with God in, in that Emily wanted to be godlike in her poetry. And he sees her more of a both-and type writer, that she can be both instead of an either-or, uh, whereas Estes sees almost like an either-or, the divided self. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I took of it, and I hope everybody enjoys <laughs> enjoys uh, enjoys what I have to say. Uh, I'll go ahead and let you know my work cited. Um, as I told you, Angela M. Estes and Gregory Palmerano. I got them both from, liter from the Literary Reference Center Plus from our library files, and then, of course, the poem itself came from our Norton Anthology of American Literature, Volume B. And that's all, folks. Though, just don't mind the second it'll take for me to go ahead and close all this out. And just let me know what you think about everything that I've had to say today.